What's up guys, TJ Got Kicks 89 here back with another video for you guys about another skate shoe or more skate shoes but um, I think a few years ago I told my friend Nas that the, the skateboard industry would eventually go back to puffier skate shoes uh, because the, it seemed, I mean as, as with fashion everything seems to always go around in circles right? So you'll have like the, the, the start and it goes into the evolution and then you'll want the devolu de devolve from it and then that goes back to the start. But uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not here to basically talk about how fashion revolves, we all know that it does. But um, the one skate shoe that I think a lot of hate has gotten over its entire lifespan was actually the Osiris D3 which I talked about in my previous video. Uh, I have a feeling that this shoe will blow up or at least it, will, it has already had its resurgence. It's just a matter of fashion adopting it. And you can see fashion houses have copied this shoe. I cannot name names obviously for fear of uh, copyright strikes or, or further flame, but feel free to, to add on to the amount of hate that I'm already getting for just holding this shoe up in this video. Um, but if you are a kid from the 90s, this is the pinnacle of what was considered to be skateboarding footwear. Um, compare it to, let's say, a Janoski, which I'll get for you right now. So this is today's uh, industry standard for, for skateboarding footwear. Thank you Nuts for lending this or parking this here in this in this house at least. This is my house slipper. Uh, this is the standard of what it is nowadays. Very slim toe. The laces are moved back slightly to prevent abrasion in the kickflip area and to prevent breaking of laces. Very, very minimal padding. There's literally a piece of cloth for the tongue. No foam whatsoever. The Elite version, which I used to skate, um, has a little bit more foam just on the tongue. The collar, not so much. Um, Vulcanize, but this is actually a capsule, but it looks like a Vulcanize, but it performs like a it's a it's a cup it's a capsule that performs like a Vulcanize, which most brands aim to do. You can see that there's crating inside there, um, and very very minimal padding, which is only coming from this insole with that zoom air in the back. Uh, most uh, industry standard skate shoes nowadays don't have this exact technology, which I think makes the Janoski a bit more skatable to me if I was to wear this. Um, I don't wear it to skate religiously, but let me tell you that this shoe is durable as hell, which is the main reason why I'm still skating my all red elite versions. But this is the industry strand nowadays. But this is the industry, industry standard nowadays. So nothing much going on, simple, fashionable. You can wear it out on date nights. C compare it to this beast of a monster. So this was, like I said, uh, the pinnacle of skateboarding footwear back in the 90s. Why? Because it was durable, um, could withstand impact, and basically just had so much padding that your foot just did not move around at all. Now this was understandable in a time where uh, shoes were leather based. Everything was actually leather, uh, all footwear was actually leather based. And the problem with leather is that it stretches and moves according to the moisture and heat applied to it. So what happens is that it expands and contracts, um, which then in turn causes it to kind of lose shape over time, which is the reason why you see shoes like this. Obviously, if you were to buy them true to size, you would see them sort of like pack out and become really like wide and look like you have um, bad foot shapes basically. Not to say that anyone that has foot shapes are bad, bad, uh, unique foot shapes are bad, but that's just what happens with leather. So, so this shoe kind of sought to, to remove that with like the use of plastics, rubber, there's minimal leather on here, there's, there's only synthetic nubuck on this version at least. This is actually a 2016 re-release of the D3, which obviously is still wearable until today. But um, let's just go over the tech specs of the shoe. So you've got this big ass um, <laughs> moon boot 
which is constructed of, like I said, plastics. You've got the, the real design feature here is this big ass hiking boot lace loop, which goes through all the way. You've got like a spare lace under there so you can lace under them if you'd like. But this uh, 3M TPR big ass lace loop here on the side, like you could blind people at night if they were to like suddenly like flash lights at you and shit. You've got more rubber on this side in this wavy piece right there. You've got lace hole, I'm uh, sorry, you've got ventilation holes going through there. From the inside, looking at the camera right now, I can see light coming through, which means that obviously heat will be able to escape from the shoe. At the front, you've also got more lace holes. Um, the front, <laughs> this, this, there's no way you're gonna be able to rip this shit with 3,000 kickflips. <laughs> Check out the CCS video. They tried 100 kickflips in this shoe and all they did was like, like lose a couple of the ridges and the, even the, the the toe cap was not even that badly scuffed up but that that huge ass um, toe piece you've got another welded on toe piece with the Osiris logo there um, the runner toe cap uh, going all the way around underlying this is just a mesh with this uh, new buck pattern here um, you've got the D3, which is the namesake of this logo. This is the third rendition of Dave Mayhew's Osiris Pro model, the uh, third shoe with Osiris. This is the D3 2001, um, which is bigger airbags, more durable. The, the original D3 only had one airbag in the back and everything in the front was just a cup sole with foam. Uh, but this is the D3 2001. At the back, on most OGs, you have like this very Air Max Plus gradient pattern going up but instead you've got this um just black with the osiris logo there there's a lot of rubber going on the shoe around the shoe guys so going up on the tongue you've got more design features a la 90s skate shoe in this big ass puppy tongue um i i talk as if i hate the shoe but this was a grail of mine you've got lace loops so you can like lace them differently and cinch them up tighter so that this tongue would cinch down further onto the top of your foot, causing you to suffocate. <laughs> and there's a, a, an Osiris logo there, which from this, from, from, from top down, you can't really see, but like as you move it, these are all basically like design patterns that, that really spoke to you as a kid. It was like, the more the merrier, the more bells and whistles the shoe had, the better it would definitely skate. That's what we thought back in the day at least. Um, and the collar, you've got a really nice padded collar. Um, fairly thick as well. You've obviously got the tongue centering straps in there and Yeah, you have a simple piece of foam insole But that's not supposed to be where your source of cushioning is coming from the source of cushioning in the th D3 2001 is coming from this full-length Air Max looking shoe which uh, the Osiris at one time called it the ah the helium compression system it's even written there on the outsole. Um, the helium compression system, which is basically this full length airbag running from the heel up to the toe of the shoe. You've got that obviously going around as well. And this durable ass Osiris um, grip pattern on the bottom. Like I said, I've worn this a few times. Still hasn't, I've, I've not managed to. I, I, this is this this is a tank. The only re, the only the only thing that I wish that this shoe had was just the ability to to beat Father Time, which is um, the ability for this sole not to crack. Um, Jordan Brand has been looking into that, but I don't think there's any way that you can have a midsole that can compress compress nicely enough without it being crack resistant. It's just the nature of these shoes it's the yeah i mean like even if they didn't have an airbag like like um standard shoes with foam just cracks so what i wanted to go over about with this shoe is that i think it's a fashion trend that is going to stay for at least another 10 to 15 years if you're around the facebook groups in malaysia uh, pasta skateboard there's already people re-looking for this exact shoe Osiris keeps putting them out. Uh, no way we can actually get them here except for eBay. 
I think or if you were to be able to have people to ship out this shoe from the US to you or if you're able to find any Chinese website like hook me up down below I probably want another pair to escape um, but a fashion statement in and itself the D3 2001 a big ass shoe Avril Lavigne wore this shoe Fred Durst wore this shoe um, a lot of a hell a lot of celebrities just wore this shoe back in the day because of how outrageous it is um, in my next video I'll talk about the Shet CT4s um, which is another polarizing shoe and it's the pinnacle of um, 90s to 2000 skateboarding footwear which is bigger bulkier better more durable more bang for your buck basically but the d3 2001 a grail of mine i only have one of this so I'm, I'm gonna try to take care of it which means wear it and try to clean it every now and then but i hope this one lasts me for a while guys d3 2001 TJ got kicks 89, 